My father, George Westmore, landed in this small town of Hollywood in the year of 1917. He started the very first makeup department at a studio called Sea League. With that, he taught my six brothers, who my oldest brother, Mont, was the head of Selznick Studios, made Gone with the Wind Intermezzo. There was my brother, Purse, and my brother, Ern, who were twins. Purse was the head of Warner's First National, and my brother, Ern, was the head of RKO and 20th Century Fox. Then my brother, Wally, was the head of Paramount Studios, and my brother, Bud, was the head of Universal. Of course, I wound up at Paramount with Mr. DeMille for quite a few years. Well, it wasn't the idea that we all wanted to become makeup men. It was that's what my father wanted for us. And in the Westmore family, uh, you usually did what my father said, meaning that was the unique thing about the Westmore family, was that here all of the brothers, six of them, were heads of the studios. My two sisters were hairstylists. The four wives that they were married to were hairstylists. I have three nephews that are makeup artists, two grandnieces and two grandnephews that are makeup artists. And that, of course, is what, what makes this family so unique. The unfortunate thing in my family, as talented as all of the brothers were, here was my father who taught my brothers the art of makeup, wig making, hairdressing, uh, made them all famous. But in creating this talent, he would pit one son against the other. He had great delight in pitting Earn against Purse and Purse against Earn. He would go and say, hey, look, you should see what your brother Earn done. And then he'd go to Purse and say, you know, or he'd go to Earn and say, look what your brother Purse has done. Well, what he did is he made the competition so great and so strong that they became very, very fine makeup artists, and nobody could touch them. And uh, as far as their, their work is concerned, hey, this town has seen many, many motion pictures made by one brother or another, and they were the, today the motion pictures are still good from what they made back in the 20s and 30s and 40s. Now, in 1935, it was the brothers who came out with telling the women of America, or the world, exactly the do's and don'ts, the seven basic types of face. Well, the House of Westmore was formed in the year of 1935. It was on Sunset Boulevard. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous salon. Had over 100 people uh, working there. Uh, it was the area that uh, all of the Hollywood actresses came to. Luella Parsons, Hedda Hopper. We had uh, princes from all over the world. We had uh, gangsters, Bugsy Siegel, Virginia Hill. They came in there. We had all kinds of people. We had some of the greatest prostitutes in the world that came in there, high-class prostitutes. So it was a combination of many, many different people, but one of the most interesting places that Hollywood had to offer. The hairdressing and the makeup was at its highest point. All of the publicity uh, was about hair. In other words, uh, across the nation, uh, women would run into their local hair salon and say, I want to look like uh, Lana Turner. I want to look like so-and-so. My brothers had over 250 Hollywood actresses under contract to the House of Westmore Cosmetics. So the name of Westmore in Hollywood was, was really very, very large. What I'm going to show you here is the different styles, the seven basic types of face, and also the combination of the different seven basic types of face that was created in 1935 by my brother Purse and the rest of the brothers. This was done, of course, through our makeup test in Hollywood. And for instance, like we have things here. Now this, my brother Purse had published in the Call Bulletin several years ago, which is called the oblong type of face that Loretta Young had. Now, as you see here, this is the wrong thing. This is where women have their, where elongated. Now, let's say, what is an oblong face? What it is, it is a wide forehead. The cheekbones are the same width, and the jawline is of the same width. 
Now, this elongated face is what makes it the oblong. So you say, what is wrong, in other words, with the makeup? You don't add your rouge all the way down the jawline, because this only accentuates the face being that, that much longer, as well as your eyebrows. What you try to do is to keep it away from the round arch that accentuates a longer face. The hairstyle itself is not pulled back, and the hairstyle is on the top of the head. These are things that are all wrong about the oblong face. Now, here's where you make some of the corrections. For instance, you try to soften the forehead by either bringing it down or taking the broad jaw and bringing the hairline into and covering the jawline itself, diminishing the size of the jaw. Here you see you put your rouge in the circular or back up into the cheekbone itself and not down the jawline. This, of course, diminishes the length of the face itself. Now, bringing the eyebrow instead of a high arched, you bring it down closer to the eye, and this cuts down as far as the length and width of the oblong face. What we try to do in corrective makeup is everything with a lady, we try to get to the oval face. In other words, all of your other face styles and shapes are created towards the oval. The diamond, the tr triangle, the inverted triangle, the square. We always, with these makeup corrections, want to finally get to the oval type. Now, here we have the oval type of Kay Francis. She was quite a lady. As you can see here, the oval type is where the wrong thing to do is the little round circle that I told you about, the little dab of rouge in the center of your cheek that looks like a fire hydrant, or also bringing the, the height of an eyebrow out and up too high. You want to bring it down closer to the eye to make the eyes appear larger, such as you see here. We bring the, the eyebrow down lower as well as we don't make it too, too wide or too large. If you want to make an eye appear larger, you bring an eyebrow down. When you want to make an eye appear smaller, you raise the eyebrow. You say, well, how do I raise an eyebrow and how do I bring it down? It's a matter of two things. Number one, plucking the, the little hairs on the underneath side when you want to raise an eyebrow, or plucking the hairs from the top side if you want to bring it down. Taking your eyebrow pencil and what we call feathering, that means taking the pencil and drawing the little lines that look like hair. Now, that's how you raise and lower an eyebrow itself. How do you determine where an eyebrow begins and where it ends? A good tip is this. Take a pencil or any sort of a stick, run it up the side of your nose, and where that end of that pencil ends right here, that's where the eyebrow starts. Now, to find out where the eyebrow finishes, take and lay the pencil right over your cheekbone towards the eye and the nose, and you'll see where that rests, and it'll sort of just settle in there. Where the tip of that pencil comes, that's where the eyebrow should finish. What you try to do is this, is your makeup should be overall, meaning when you look at the person, your eye doesn't go to any one thing. For instance, it doesn't go to a very bright lips or a big lips. It doesn't go to a, a arched eyebrows. It doesn't go to the heavy eye shadow. It doesn't go to long eyelashes with the heavy, heavy mascara. Everything should be done uh, as, as nicely as possible to where it all coincides into looking at a, at a beautiful face. Another one point is this, and that is an awful lot of women can have the correct makeup, the correct hairstyle, but if they've got a bad personality, the makeup won't help. Another point about lipstick that most ladies do wrong. We talked about the thin upper lip, and we talked about filling that in so that it balances with the lower lip. Your upper lip should balance in this area here with the lower lip. Now. A good point is this. For instance, to make a person look like she has a perennial smile or always smiling, the thing you want to do is to take and fill in the lower lip to its very fullest extent, right to the very, very inside of your lip. Take the upper lip and just cut it short, just barely short of filling it fully in. The reason for that is this, is that the bottom lip is fully made up to the very corner. It turns it up. It turns the lips up. You should have 
lips turning up uh, so that you have that perennial smile and so that you don't have the mouth drooping because if making up your lips incorrectly will give you that down in the mouth or that turned down look. I hope what we have tried to show you here today is going to help in some little way, maybe with some trick or some secret that we have talked about, uh, whether it be your hairstyling or a very broad forehead or lips not being made up full enough and your eyes. But the thing to remember is always, always use little amount of makeup, but try and underplay everything you do, meaning it is better to use less makeup than too much. And whatever you do, enhance your good points and diminish your bad points.